This video is brought to you by the Battle Zoo Bestiary, a new book with over 100 award winning monsters and other resources from Paizo lead designer Mark Cypher. Sign up today at kickstarter.rollforcombat.com and join the campaign when it launches on August 31st. Hello and welcome to part 1 of Vehicles in Pathfinder 2nd Edition by How It's Played. In this video we'll be looking at the general information needed to manage vehicles in your game and in the next video we'll take things one step further by examining the rules for vehicles in combat. Vehicles in Pathfinder are modes of transportation that are objects instead of creatures. As such they may function in much the same way as mounts but have their own set of rules and generally speaking these rules only apply to combat encounters. If a party of players books passage on a ship across the sea or are riding in a caravan of carriages across the countryside you should feel free to skip over these rules but if that ship comes under attack by pirates or a passing dragon decides that caravan of wagons looks like its next lunch then you may need these extra mechanics to help resolve the scene. So some of these rules may look familiar to what you're used to but there are a few differences to be aware of. First, vehicles are assigned a size category just like creatures, however a vehicle size does not determine the space it occupies. Instead each vehicle will have its specific dimensions listed in a stat block. And note that the vehicle size entry is for the vehicle itself and does not include any animals that may be pulling. For example, a carriage is a large size vehicle and it occupies a 10 foot by 10 foot area which is exactly what we're used to with large size creatures because that's a 2 by 2 square area on a map, but a cart that is also a large size vehicle is 10 feet long and only 5 feet wide, meaning it occupies a 1 by 2 square area on the map instead of the 2 by 2 square area that we're used to for anything listed as being large. And again that is for the cart itself and does not include any animals like a horse that might be pulling it. A vehicle's movement type is determined by the vehicle itself while the distance it moves each round is determined by its pilot's actions. But the biggest difference with determining a vehicle's movement is unlike with creatures, vehicles can't just turn on a dime and therefore facing rules are enforced for vehicles. At any given time it will be important to know which direction the vehicle is facing which is referred to as its heading. When a vehicle moves it must move forward in the direction of its heading and cannot move side to side or backwards unless the stat block specifically says otherwise. However several rules state that a vehicle must travel in a quote straight line. In this case moving in a quote straight line is in the direction of the vehicle's heading but may move into the space either to the left or right of that space but may not change its heading. So for example if this is our carriage's heading then moving in a straight line means it could move here or it could move here or it could move here but regardless of those three options its heading remains the same it does not turn. In order for a vehicle to turn on a battle map it must first move forward an amount of distance equal to its length. So using our cart as an example it would have to move forward 10 feet and then once it does that it can change its heading by up to 90 degrees in either direction. Pretty simple for a carriage but let's also look at sailing boats. Here it says they're 75 feet long meaning this boat would need to move forward in a direction of its heading for 15 squares before it could turn up to 90 degrees. And some vehicles like this one include special traits like sluggish that modify the vehicle's turn rate even further. In this case the sailing ship would need to move forward twice its length to turn, so 30 squares forward instead of 15. Also note that once a vehicle moves its length forward it can turn up to 90 degrees meaning it can turn towards a diagonal heading if it wishes. By raw it still needs to move forward its entire length to do so but some GMs may choose to only require the vehicle to move half its length forward when turning 45 degrees instead of the full 90. The vehicle's pilot will need to roll skill checks to control the vehicle and to steer it but the exact skill that is used will vary from vehicle to vehicle. Each vehicle stat block includes a section for piloting checks that lists which skills may be used by the pilot. For example, the pilot for a galley may use sailing lure, 
diplomacy, or intimidation. And the available skills for these piloting checks are largely informed by the vehicle's means of propulsion, which are listed in parentheses in the speed listing. Galleys have a swim speed of 30 feet, and a galley's means of propulsion are road and wind. Some vehicles like this one have more than one means of propulsion, but may never use more than one at the same time. So a galley can move by means of rowing or by wind, but not both at the same time. We'll discuss more about the different means of propulsions and how they work in the next video when we dive into more information about vehicles in combat. Every round in encounter mode, the vehicle will move during its pilot's turn and the pilot must use their actions to control it. And vehicles may only take part in one move action per round, regardless of how many different people attempt to pilot it during the round. Once a vehicle is in motion, it has momentum and continues to move towards its current heading. Each round, if the vehicle moved in the previous round, the pilot must either use an action to control the vehicle or stop it. If the pilot does not do this, then the vehicle will become uncontrolled. When a vehicle is uncontrolled, it moves each round on its most recent pilot's turn. The distance it moves is 10 feet less than it moved in the previous round in a straight line until it crashes or comes to a stop. So every round that a vehicle is uncontrolled, it progressively moves slower and slower. At the GM's discretion, the rate at which the uncontrolled vehicle slows may be increased or even decreased due to environmental conditions like difficult terrain, wind, or the direction water is flowing. And uncontrolled vehicles may still interact with some vehicle actions, such as hitting obstacles or other vehicles, or running over a creature, but when doing so, the uncontrolled vehicle uses its current rate of movement instead of the vehicle's speed score. Another trait we should cover before getting too deep into how you pilot vehicles is the reckless trait. When a piloting action has the reckless trait, the pilot must pass a piloting check before resolving the reckless action they want to perform. On a success, they can proceed and attempt the reckless action, but on a failure, they cannot attempt the reckless action, and instead the vehicle moves at its entire speed score in a straight line and becomes uncontrolled. As previously mentioned, controlling a vehicle calls for its pilot to roll piloting checks, the skills and DCs for which are listed in the vehicle stat block. Also, at the start of an encounter, the pilot can usually roll whatever skill they use for their piloting checks for their initiative as well. Okay, so next let's look at the different piloting actions that are available. Unless otherwise noted, the DCs for these checks will be the standard DC for the vehicle's level, and the GM may further modify the DC as appropriate. For example, if the vehicle is moving through difficult terrain, the DC will increase from standard to hard and for greater difficult terrain, the DC becomes incredibly hard. First up is board. Simply put, you spend one action to get onto or off of a vehicle. If the vehicle is in motion, then this calls for an acrobatics or athletics check against the vehicle's armor class. Next is the drive action, which is how you make the vehicle move. Each turn, the pilot will decide how many of their actions they wish to invest in controlling the vehicle. For a one action, the pilot rolls the check, and on a success, the vehicle moves up to its speed and turns normally. On a failure, the vehicle moves its entire speed in a straight line and cannot turn, and on a critical failure, the vehicle moves its entire speed in a straight line and becomes uncontrolled. If the pilot spends two actions on drive, then the vehicle moves up to twice its speed in a straight line, but cannot turn. Note that when you spend two actions to drive, it gains the reckless trait, meaning the pilot needs to pass a piloting check before they can resolve this action as previously discussed. If the pilot spends three actions on drive, then they face an extra piloting check due to it having the reckless trait, however this time they face a negative five penalty to that check. But if they succeed, then the vehicle moves up to three times its speed in a straight line. Next we have the stop action. This costs one of the pilot's actions and brings the vehicle to a stop. It doesn't matter how fast it was going, this will bring it to a rest. But remember, a vehicle may only be used for one move action per round, so you can't perform another vehicle action and stop in the same round. And the last action we're going to discuss in this video is take control. Simply put, 
This takes one action and a successful piloting check, and this is how you designate yourself as the vehicle's pilot. Those are all of the vehicle actions we'll be discussing here. In the next video, we'll examine how vehicles function in combat, such as running creatures over, ramming, collision damage, attacks of opportunity, and more. Before we close, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. These videos would not be possible without their continued generosity and support. Members of the How It's Played Patreon community receive special benefits like exclusive content and getting to vote on the topics I cover. If you would like to support this channel and help it grow, the easiest way to do that is by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you get notified when new videos release, and I can always be reached through Twitter and Facebook too. Thanks for watching, take care, and happy gaming!